Morality. 168. Abominations. Original publication date unknown, included by the author in Roots of Reconstruction, 1991, pages 539 and 540. The Lord God uses strong language throughout Scripture to tell us how he views sin. We must recognize that there is a difference between strong language and profanity. Profanity is a sign of weakness and impotence. Profane men cover up their inadequacies by the use of profanity. They present a pseudo-manliness in place of the realities of quiet strength. God's strong language reveals his nature, justice and power. One such word is abomination, which appears repeatedly in the King James Version. It is a translation of several Hebrew words, all similar in meaning. Sheketz means filthy, idolatrous. Toba means disgusting, abhorrent, idolatrous. Tab means to loathe or detest. Pigul, to stink. Zam, to be enraged, to foam at the mouth, and so on. Homosexuality, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22, is described as disgusting, idolatrous, toba. And Leviticus chapter 18, verse 30, applies this term to the entire catalogue of sexual evils and to Moloch worship. In Leviticus chapter 11, verses 10 to 13, verse 20, 23, 41 and 42, the terms sheketz, filthy, idolatrous, is applied to forbidden foods. Sacrifices offered to God in a false spirit are called an abomination. Toba, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 13, etc. And lying lips and false wits are so designated in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22, and chapter 20, verse 23, and elsewhere with the same word. Two basic stresses in the words used in the Greek and Hebrew and translated as abomination are that an abominable thing is, first of all, idolatrous. It is idolatrous because it is contrary to God's law. The Greek word for abomination, Acts chapter 10 verse 28, verse Peter chapter 4 verse 3, is athemitos, meaning unlawful, themis being the word for law. Another Greek word, bidlekti, appears in Titus chapter 1 verse 16 to describe men who profess to know God but deny him by their works. Such men, Paul says, profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. It is this same word in its nominative form which is used to describe the abomination of desolation. Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. The epitome of false religion. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 27, all such are barred from the holy city, the new creation. Thus, idolatry involves despising God's law and pretending to have faith while being disobedient. Second, the words for abomination also indicate that there is filth, stench and repulsiveness inseparably connected with what God abhors. Paul says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 We cannot do anything to God's glory if it is not in faithfulness to God's law word. Scripture asserts the unity of things physical and spiritual, so that the unity of both is apparent both in faithfulness and disobedience. That which is lawless and idolatrous is also repulsive and filthy in God's sight, and it therefore should be so in our eyes also. God, who does not change, does not call something an abomination at one time and good at another. What disgusts God should disgust us. The word abomination does not describe something which is, quote, particularly offensive to the religious feeling, end quote, as one scholar has said, 
That's something which is totally abhorrent to God. Different cultures have had different ideas on the subject. Genesis chapter 43 verse 32 tells us that the Egyptians would not eat with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Herodotus said, No Egyptian man or woman will kiss a Grecian on the mouth, because it was an abomination for them to do so. Differing cultures have had varying ideas on the subject, but our view must be biblically, not culturally governed. It is what is an abomination to God that must govern us. When we encounter the word abomination in Scripture, we should take warning. God is using strong language, and He expects us to take a strong stand in obedience to His word.